If you're like me, you've bought a Gyropic camera for uh, around $399 off of Kickstarter, and you've received it, and they say that you can edit your watermark with their app, but they don't give you that ability. So uh, I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to open up their app just to confirm that uh, there is no updates. We're using the latest version. Um, they basically said that it is a feature coming, but uh, unfortunately it's still not available. So we can see that there's no option within here. Um, even when you plug it in, there's no option here. The only thing they've updated is giving us this option right there. So let's go into how to actually add a watermark like this. Um, because what they give you is something like this. And I know that most people don't want that. So let's go out and figure out how to do this. <clears throat> so for this tutorial, you're going to need Photoshop because Photoshop is the best way to keep your metadata stored. Um, here's an image that I've used in the past. Just uh, I took a photo while I was on my electric scooter. I uh, had a little gyroptic camera on my helmet, and uh, right here's the watermark. So the standard view of the watermark is just across the very bottom, and you might be wondering how the heck do you replace something that's so distorted. Well, it's not that bad, actually. So what you should do is uh, just check your image size and make sure that it's up above the size that you're using. So this is 2048. So I've made a watermark just over here in a, a document that's 4096 by 4096. It has to be exactly the same uh, because you want the image to be square. Now what I did is I just took a standard gray background and then I held the um, elliptical marquee tool and held shift at the far right or far left corner, dragged, and then just went down to the point where it lined up and I basically made a black circle and put my logo on there. So you might be thinking, well, I have the logo, but I'd like to have some text as well. So you see the skyroptic text uh, up and all around and such, you might want to put yours. <coughs> so we're going to take the uh, circle shape tool and uh, switch this option from shape to uh, path. And then once you see that, you're just going to shift and then go from here and start to drag. And once you're right near the middle, you're just going to hold uh, Alt. Oh, actually, let's uh, undo that. I'm just going to hold Shift right in the middle, actually. And then I'm going to hold Alt. And that will basically make it center, uh, go from the center. Now, you can see it's not lined up perfectly, so I'm just going to let go. Now, because this is a path, we have to use the pen tool. So I'm going to uh, switch the pen tool. Now that the pen tool is selected, I can use my uh, left and up and down arrows on my keyboard to position it. Um, you might find that it's easier to align it um, just with these, like vertical centers and such. Uh, let's see, horizontal centers, vertical center, and that's pretty much exactly it. So if you find this is a bit too much, which I don't, I think this is exactly perfect. Um, because you want the text just around the edge of the circle, not too much inside. So now that we've got that path set up, you can see it right into the paths. We're just going to go to the text option. And when you see right here, it's got a circle around the eye, like the, uh, the text item or text icon. When I move up here, there's a little squiggly line. That means that you're going to type on the line. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to switch my font to white. And I'm going to lower my font to, let's say, 25. And click back there. And I'm just going to actually increase it because 25 seems way too small with the, uh, the 4000 resolution. So 72 seems good. So I'm going to put testing um, 360 image post and then I'm just going to add a bunch of spaces. Now, I don't know if the typing. Yeah, so when I add the spaces, it's just going to move the testing 360 image all the way to the bottom. So I'm just going to keep doing this until it's about right near the bottom. I'm going to type in www.mattsullivan.com. Then I'm just going to keep doing spaces. Actually, no, I'm just going to leave that. So now that I've got this way, I want it just above it. So I'm going to hold Control T and rotate. And then once I've rotated it up there, I've got Matt Sullivan back on the top. 360 test image at the bottom. So that's not all of it. We've got the image pretty much as we want it. So, so we can edit it later. We're just going to convert these into a smart image. So I'm going to select both layers and then switch layer, smart objects, and then convert to a smart object. 
once it's converted into a smart object, you can edit it by double clicking down at the bottom right down here. And uh, to go back out, you can press the top right X. So now that I've got that as a smart object, I'm just going to go to filter and then distort polar coordinates. And I want to see the polar coordinates distort it so it looks like this, not like this. So we're going polar to rectangular. And then once that's done, this is how we want it. Now we want the text at the bottom. So we're going to go to edit, transform, rotate 180. And I believe this is what we want to see. So we're going to select all, uh, copy as merged, go back in here and paste. We're going to go control T, uh, just uh, control alt and zoom out. You can also use uh, right here. Um, and then we're going to hold shift, drag up to here. And then as soon as we get the edge pretty much lined up with the width, we are going to squash. So we're going to drag this to the bottom and then drag this all the way. So pretty much here. Now, I'm not sure if the text is correct, so I think that we might have to rotate it like this. So I just did Control T and rotate it again. And now that that's done, I'm going to File, Save As, switch it to a JPEG by pressing J, and then go to my desktop and I'm going to test this out. So Test Image, save it as a full quality. And the reason we're not saving as um, like exporting and export as and saving it for the web is because there's some metadata. So when we go into the file information and we see the uh, camera data, there is actually in the raw data some details about the camera and such. Um, let me just uh, confirm where it is. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like it's actually in this one. So I'm just going to import some old stuff that I've had. There we go. So originally, it's supposed to have all this metadata. And uh, let's go here. So under basic, it would say that it's copyrighted by Guy Roptic. You can switch that copyright notice. Um, let's see. I'm surprised that the camera data isn't actually on here. But right in here is basically um, the information you need, which is the panel. And to that, if it's not there, then it will not understand to use the panoramic viewer. <coughs> so to do that, just use one of the uh, images that you haven't edited and uh, go to here and import. And then basically just, uh, or no, sorry, export. So what you're doing is you're exporting the metadata that already exists and then you name it 360 and you put it in there and basically you can import it if you need but uh, that shouldn't be needed if you're if you're doing it this method um, so once you've got that done we're just going to check that out so over here add content go to our desktop type in test image and we're going to just down and there we go we've got the watermark it's got the text we can adjust it further if we need and uh, that's pretty much how you do it so that's basically how to replace the watermark with uh, a lot of steps because Skyroptic will not provide us the tools to do so. Thanks and I hope this helped.